Welcome to part three of the transplant medication educational video. This part will cover transplant medications focusing on the medications we will use to keep you healthy. This class of medications is referred to as anti-infective medications. The fourth and final part of this DVD or video will cover supplements. We talked about the medicine to protect your organ. Now let's switch gears and discuss the medicine to protect you by preventing infections. You might wonder why you need to take anti-infective medications. The anti-infective medications are as important as your anti-rejection medications. You are at higher risk for infection because of the anti-rejection medications that you take. Anti-infective medications help to prevent common infections after transplant. The good thing about these medications is they are all usually temporary and will be stopped at various times after your transplant. There are three different types of anti-infective medications. We prescribe these medications to prevent bacterial infections in the lungs and urine, viral infections, and fungal infections. We will review each medication separately in the next slides. The first medicine is trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole, which is taken to prevent bacterial infections. The brand name for trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole is Bactrim. Your medicine bottle will likely say trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole, not Bactrim. Bactrim is commonly taken only for about one year after transplant. However, there is a small group of patients who do need Bactrim for a longer period of time. Don't worry if you're allergic to Bactrim. We have alternative medications such as Dapsone, Atovaquone, or inhaled pentamidine that we can prescribe for you. Under side effects, Bactrim can increase your skin sensitivity to the sunlight. So sunscreen should always be used as a transplant patient. In addition, Bactrim can cause stomach upset and should be taken with food. Finally, if you ever notice a rash while on Bactrim, please see your doctor right away. To prevent viral infections, either valgancyclovir or valacyclovir can be taken. You will be on one or the other, not both. The brand, of, the brand name of valgancyclovir is valcite, and this medicine is taken for up to three or six months after transplant. The brand name of valacyclovir is valtrex, and this is taken for three months after transplant. The dose of these medications can be changed due to your kidney function. The most common side effect of these medications is a decreased white blood cell count. This is one reason why we have your white blood cell count checked with your blood draws. To prevent fungal infections, either niastatin or fluconazole are taken. Again, you will be prescribed one or the other, not both. Niastatin is mainly prescribed for kidney and or pancreas transplant patients. It comes as a liquid and must be shaken before taken. Niastatin, unfortunately, is taken four times a day, but the great thing is you only have to take it for one month after transplant. The key with niastatin is to not eat or drink for 15 to 20 minutes after taking it. Oftentimes, people take this medication after meals and before bedtime. Fluconazole is mainly prescribed for our liver transplant recipients. It is taken for two months after transplant. Fluconazole does have a known drug interaction with tacrolimus, one of your anti-rejection medications. When we discontinue fluconazole, it is likely that your tacrolimus dose will also change. Fluconazole may also affect your liver, which is another reason why we monitor your liver numbers so closely after transplant. In summary, you are taking three medications to prevent bacterial, viral, and fungal infections. All three medications are typically temporary and do not eat or drink for 15 to 20 minutes after taking niastatin.